when I spoke to the customer about this job, I said to them, there may be a little bit of an issue there. Let me show you. They haven't gone flush on the tile. They must have fitted this into this little gap here and then tiled onto it. Time-wise, I'm, I'm against it on this one a little bit, but I know the customers really well. And then when they get back, we can go through our options with it. Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is well. Quick little midweek video this one. Pro a little short one, nothing too big, just to keep you going on a Wednesday evening. This is a follow-on video from the shower screen video I did a couple of weeks back. And it was just the basin within that, that toilet area, bathroom area. I had to do the basin as well. Um, and I had some little issues with it, as you'll see in the video. And, and this is what's key when you get good customers is working with them and telling them if you can sort of foresee an issue before you do the job, it's always best to sort of pre-warn them. It might go fine, but there might be that little issue during it. And on this video, you'll see that there's a very small little issue that the customer was made aware of when I went and quoted the job. So they were fine with it. But sometimes for me, when I do a job and it's not completely finished how I want it to, it just really annoys me. They were fine with it, but yeah. So you'll see in this video, there's a little bit of an issue near the end and we are getting it rectified we are sorting it out but it'll probably be a couple of weeks till we can get back but i envisage that that's why i fitted it the way i fitted it you'll see in the video it's all uh, all explained in that um while i'm here if you're not subscribed to the channel hit that subscribe button it just does help the algorithms and whatever witchcraft goes on in the background of youtube helps to push the videos um, as i said i think in the last one I hadn't done a couple of videos for a couple of weeks because I had loads going on. So that dropped off a little bit. We're back on it now. I've got videos stacked up, ready to go. So yeah, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, drop me a comment in the uh, in the box below, in the description below. Um, let me know what you would have done if you'd have been faced with this issue. Some people would have gone and tiled it themselves. I personally, I can do tiling, but I personally always let my tiler do the bits and bobs that we need to do it, Matt and Nathan. Um, we've got a big job coming up with them as well soon. So, yeah, anyway, enough waffle from me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you on the next one. Now we've got the shower screen in, fitted, sealed in, and done, ticked off the list. We can now start the second job that we've got to do in here, and it is fairly simple removing this basin and vanity unit and fitting a new 800 by, I think it's 334 coming out there. Now, the only issue we've got with this the setup that this is let me show you where they fitted this before they haven't gone flush on the tile they must have fitted this prior into this little gap here and then tiled onto it also i think the tiles come down onto the top of the unit with this instead of it being fully tiled and then the unit gone in same with the floor i think now the customer knows there may be some little tweaks around it so what we're going to do is get this one out get the new one offered in place and just basically match it up and try and centralise it a little bit better than than this one is because I want to I want to try and push it against the tiles and, and, and somehow get that patched up. But I'm not sure how we're going to do that yet. We'll have to have a look. So first off, two isolation valves up there, two screws either side. Get the trap off and get this unit out. So what we've got to do now is get this basin out. So we'll isolate the hot and colds underneath, open the tap up, drain the water out get a little bucket underneath and empty the trap out into that before we put it back down the basin. Then obviously get all the bolts out underneath, bolts out from under the basin underneath to see if we can lift this out. Get the silicone cut round the outside and it just makes life a lot easier when you come to pull it out. So give it a little whack like so, break the seal and then get a little bit of uh, strength behind it and pull that out. This one was a little bit awkward to be honest, but we managed to get it out and we're ready now to get the unit out. So with this unit, you've got to start by taking all the screws out just to make life a lot easier. I was sort of worried with this one because I didn't want to pull the tiles off when I was pulling the, the worktop off. Luckily, it didn't come out too bad, as you can see. So then we just start getting the rest of the unit out, get them end panels off, get the blanking panel off the side, and then hopefully the unit will come out with not too much trouble. But I was just a little bit concerned about that waste. 
that unit out of the way now then and then offer the new one up into position just to see if i've got to trim that waste pipe back which i think i had as you can see it's pushing against the top of that vanity unit there so yeah that's it it's got to come out so i grabbed those little nipex cutters that i'm just not keen on them they just don't sort of lock onto the pipe very well but it's what i've got at the minute i am going to get some other ones you know the ones that actually clip onto the pipe so we cut that top bit off anyway get the pipe work out of the way and then offer that unit back in and then we can start looking at getting it all connected up right then i've brought the unit up because i just want to offer it into position so i'm not sure how it's going to look when it's in or how it's going to fit so let's try it in have to trim a little bit let's grab that you're gonna have to trim a little bit out the bottom where them pipes are going that's not a problem right then just as i thought with this basin unit it's 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 leaving a big row where the tiles were out and down the side and down the floor now when I spoke to the customer about this job, I said to them there may be a little bit of an issue there. Now, I haven't got my Tyler on standby. Time-wise, I'm, I'm against it on this one a little bit, but I know the customers really well. So, let me show you exactly what's going on. This is the base unit sitting in here, and this is the depth of the basin that's going on the top. Now, obviously, with the basin on the top, it's going to sit about there. Then we're going to have this gap here, all the way round. I'm not happy with this bit here, and also, the flooring so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fix this in as it is and get the basin on it and get it all on and working for them um, and then we can have a conversation when they get back about just what they want to do with it because to finish it properly it's got to be tiled down and, and really tiled behind the the unit at least down to here for it to sit flush with the walls and stuff like that so yeah it's not an ideal solution but what I'm gonna do is get this screwed in. I'm just gonna put two screws in there just to hold it into position. I'm gonna sit the basin on the top, um, probably put a, a couple of little blobs of silicon in the corners just to hold it in place, but get it connected up so at least they can use it. And then when they get back, we can go through our options with it. And at least that way, I'm gonna be able to take that out without any problems anywhere. So let's get doing that and uh, at least get the basin up and running. So we've got this base unit now fixed back into the wall just with two screws, two plugs, because it's going to come back out again to completely finish this off. I've just made the basin up. So if we drop this on, or place this on, should we say, that's where it's going to sit. Um, yeah, I'm just going to put two little bits of silicon at the back just to blob it into position to stop it moving around when the customer's using it until we sort it um, and then obviously you've got the tap on so we connect up under there we'll get the waste connected under there it's on two flexes straight onto what was on there before two isolation valves and get it up and running and then probably a phone call to the customer because they're due back tomorrow so what i'll do i'll pop in and see them tomorrow hand the job back over to them and talk them through their options with this but the fact that i'm just sort of fitting it temporary We'll save a lot of hassle, we can take it out, it's easy enough to get out. I would have thought you could match these tiles up, to be honest, they're a pretty um, generic tile, so we'll have the conversation. Right, there we go, all in, fitted, done, connected up, water's on, so that the customer can, uh, can crack on and carry on using that. What I have done is put three very small little blobs of silicon at the back, just because, as I said, we know this is going to come back out. I spoke to the customer on the phone, sent them some pictures, and they fully appreciate that the one that we took out was slightly bigger. So it is what it is. But, like I said, we need to sort this out. So get the toilet to do that. Get some tiles around the back. Two bolts, two fittings. That's out and ready to be sorted. So no doubt we'll be back at some point to get that finally, finally sorted. But for now, it's job done. New basin, and obviously, what we showed in the other video, new shower screen.